To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. Hello, my dear grade 11 students. Today, we are going to discuss the final lesson of your grade 11 science syllabus. So, this final lesson, in the final lesson, my dear children, will be discussing about the biosphere. So, the biosphere, I think you have learned about the, uh, I think you have learned about the biodiversity lesson in grade 9. So, over there we discuss simply what do you mean by an ecosystem and also we discuss several things regarding the biodiversity in our planet earth. So, this lesson is also going to reflect about those things, right, but somewhat further, right, there is somewhat, ad, uh, somewhat advanced knowledge given in, this, uh, given in this lesson for you guys regarding the biodiversity and also with the ecosystems. Somewhat similar to that lesson, but however, there are somewhat advanced knowledge given for you guys under this lesson regarding the ecosystems and the biodiversity thing. And also, my dear children, uh, when you go further with the lesson part after that, we'll be discussing about several uh, methods of environment pollution, right? Different kinds of methods of environment pollution will be discussed, okay? And uh, the other thing is that uh, we'll be discussing about the ill effects caused by the environment pollution right over there we'll be discussing about several uh, things i mean like uh, several materials which are added to the environment by the human population and by machines and also by different kinds of vehicles and other stuff okay and because of that we'll be discussing what are the things or what are the if uh, what kind of ill effects which are getting caused for the people and for the environment and also uh, we'll be discussing about uh, because of these ill effects what are the harmful things that can happen to the organisms living in our planet earth okay so mainly we, we are going to focus about those things regard uh, within the lesson part biodiversity okay right my dear children then let's let let's head on to see what are the main topics that we are about to discuss within this lesson part the main topics so first of all we'll be discussing about organizational levels and interactions of the bio bi uh, biosphere right organizational levels and the interactions of bio biosphere so organizational levels like here we are discussing about like uh, from what state from what stage to which stage does the biosphere is uh, has been made up of Okay, that means I'm. Uh, we are going to discuss from the structural level to the topmost level. Okay, so under that, my dear children, we'll be mainly discussing about like what are the things or what is the main individual thing which helps to create the biosphere. Then, my dear children, each organizational level up to the biosphere then we'll be discussing what kind of a thing is this biosphere is okay like what sort of a thing what is the definition the real definition for the bios uh, biosphere okay so we'll be discussing about the organizational of bio uh, biosphere first then my dear children we'll be discussing about mechanisms involved in maintaining the equilibrium of ecosystems so when you get to know what does the bio uh, biosphere is you will get to know about these ecosystems i think in grade 9 also we have learned about the ecosystems in detail what do you mean by an ecosystem simply an eco ecosystem is a place or else uh, you can say that an environment that organisms and also non-living things interact uh, uh, or organisms and also non-living things interact each other okay that means my dear children when you take our living environment let's take our home garden now in our home garden there are people i mean us okay 
and there are other types of insects and other types of animals and also my dear children there are other types of organisms like microorganisms and plants even though we won't be able to observe microorganisms from our naked eye you know that in any kind of an environment we can observe microorganisms okay so there are microorganisms and plants so my dear children in like i said in grade 9 we discussed what kind of a thing is this ecosystem ecosystem means in simple a place where living things and non-living things get in interacted okay a place where living and non-living things are getting interacted each other so when you take a home garden now in a home garden you know that there are people we living on then after that my dear children you know that there are simple microorganisms even though we won't be able to observe microorganisms you know that in each kind of an environment in our planet earth there are microorganisms and also my dear children there are plants you know that plants are also belong to the type of an organism we uh, we consider that plants are also living it's because that they are like they are may also they, they also made up with uh, cells and tissues and other kinds of things okay living things so they are for plants animals microorganisms all of these three uh, kinds of organisms can be observed within our home garden then my dear children we can observe sunlight water or else water vapor we can take it as water vapor now then uh, ground ground means soil sand gravel and all of those things then my dear children after that we will be able to observe light right then uh, like that way there are like different kinds of non-living things okay in the environment in our home garden so what we do is we means organisms we are going to interact with different other kinds of organisms or else we are going to interact with non-living things. For a simple example, we are drinking water. Now, we, an organism, okay, then water, a non-living thing. So, that is a living, non-living interactions. So, like that way, we discuss several things regarding the interactions that is going to happen within an environment, an ecosystem okay we discuss several things regarding that so we'll be discussing about mechanisms in maintaining the equilibrium of ecosystems so we'll be discussing about mechanisms in you know that there should be a certain equilibrium in our biosphere i mean like in our in uh, ecosystem now when you take a home garden there should be a certain balance between the interactions so we'll be discussing about the mechanisms that controls this um, equilibrium in the environment or in the ecosystem then my dear children different environmental pollutants and their effects so like i said within the beginning of the lesson part we'll be discussing further we'll be discussing further details about the environment pollutants and their ill effects okay so over there we'll be discussing about organic pollutants and as well as inorganic pollutants okay and also there are ill effects bad defects caused to the environment and for the organisms who are living in the environment then my dear children will be discussing the factors that affect the lifestyle of human and the problems created so the factors that affects the lifestyle of human and the problems created so factors that is going to affect the lifestyle of the human beings you know that we came through the evolution like millions of years back so now the modern human is named as the homo sapien sapien that's the genetical name of modern human so modern human evolved from previous uh, human beings human beings means actually those organisms can be referred as apes so we evolved from apes so my dear children during the earlier time period i mean like when you go to the uh, like uh, 1500 1600 like that kind of region right so in during that region the technological development was not there in this much of extent so that means people had very simple and very you know like a, a very traditional lifestyle okay a simple and a traditional lifestyle so mainly those uh, mainly those people were based on agriculture 
and my dear children like this way there was no any industrial revolution the industrial process was not there right so therefore people had very common and a very traditional and a simple lifestyle lifestyle so my dear children when the people are going to evolve now we have evolved now up to a certain extent where the technology is somewhat advanced right and also people also having certain kind of knowledge about the things that govern the environment so therefore our lifestyle has got changed dramatically from that era to this era so that means my dear children according to our new lifestyle we have to change our patterns and behaviors and our uh, other cultural things as well okay so we'll be discussing within this lesson part the factors which affects the change of lifestyle of human okay the factors which are going to affect the change of lifestyle of human beings and the problems which are getting created because of change in this lifestyle from that one to this one okay actually people who are living in the previous era right they did not had any kind of problems like most of the problems are now um, most of the problems that we have now is not available or those problems were not observed during the pre uh, previous era it's because that their lives was really simple right right then so we'll be discussing about those life uh, factors change in the lifestyle and my and my dear children will be discussing about the uh, problems okay created because of the change of lifestyle then my dear children finally we'll be discussing about sustainable development and environmental management how we can manage these 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 things sustainably i mean like how we can do our work and while doing our work how we can manage to save the environment right so we'll be discussing about those things under the final topic of the lesson biosphere under the dev sustainable development and the environmental management so these are the things that we are going to learn within the lesson biosphere my dear children right so this is the final lesson my dear children after that we'll be planning to do several questions uh, regarding the biosphere lesson after finishing up the uh, after finishing finishing up all the theoretical parts we'll be planning to do the uh, questions related to the biosphere lesson right first of all we'll be starting the questions from your textbook then after that we'll be discussing several extra questions related to the biosphere lesson so stay with me till the end of the lesson to get knowledge about the last lesson of your science syllabus right then so this is the brief given to the each and every topic that we are going to discuss within this lesson part so now let's head on to discuss the first and foremost topic of your less uh, of our lesson so we are going to discuss about then first of all the organizational levels and the interactions of biosphere organizational levels and the interactions of biosphere right so under that given a subtopic environmental equilibrium and ecological balance environmental equilibrium and ecological balance so while you are reading the subtopic given you can get some kind of an idea that ah now in this lesson part we'll be discussing about the equilibrium right how we can maintain the equilibrium in equilibrium in the environment actually we won't be able to uh, intermediate with the with these things right these processes to uh, control the uh, equilibrium but however we'll be discussing about the processes that govern the equilibrium of a certain environment within this lesson part right so let's head on to see what are these things what are things given the physical and the biological components in which interactions takes place for the existence of organism is environment so it's very simple right so environment is the place where all the interactions of living and unliving things takes place so soil water and air come under the physical components and all the organisms that is plant animals and microorganisms are included in the biological component or the biotic component so like i said when i'm starting the lesson part my dear children there are living things physical things and as well as non living things right living things uh, living things are the uh, plants animals and uh, microorganisms then there are physical things like 
plant uh, like a uh, wind then after that sunlight water soil and so on okay so there are living things and as well as physical things in our environment so all of these things are included in the environment okay so within the environment these things are getting interacted each other so usually biotic things are uh, the ones which has life and abiotic things are the ones which do not have life i mean like those are the physical things okay right other than that temperature rainfall humidity and sunlight also come under environmental conditions ah other than that my dear children there are certain environmental conditions right so these environmental conditions are also very important for the survival of the environment like the humidity temperature right and also rainfall and so on right next one the organisms and physical environment have a balanced relationship this favorable relationship is refers to refer to as the environment environmental equilibrium right so the organisms and the physical environment have a balanced relationship this favorable relationship is referred to as the environmental equilibrium even a small change in the environment can affect its existence then it has an ability to restore its conditions but today this equilibrium is affected due to complicated human activities so my dear children you know that our environment you know when you take our environment like i said in the starting of the lesson part there are certain things in our environment okay there are different things in our environment so when these things interact each other there should be a balanced right there should be a balance what will happen if you break the balance then my dear children there can be some ill effects okay for an example you know that there should be a balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide level in our atmosphere what will happen if this balance is going to break down let's take for an example what will happen if more carbon dioxide is getting produced within the environment because of because of uh, because of you know any kind of an activity i mean like you know that now nowadays this problem is actually happening right because of the emission of large amount of greenhouse gases right and also uh, here we are discussing about carbon dioxide no so you know that we uh, when burning vehicle vehicle fuel right like petrol diesel and so on heavy amount of carbon dioxide gas is going to release to the environment right so this will definitely increase the carbon dioxide level in the environment so from year to year the amount of uh, em the uh, amount of emission of carbon dioxide is also going to increase from year to a year so in that case definitely the balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide levels are going to break down so in that case what well, what will happen nowadays nowadays actually we can observe that uh, phenomena you know that there is a thing which is going around our uh, world which is called as the global warming that means from year to year from time to time our and our average temperature is keep getting increased so it's not a good uh, it's not a good condition you know that because of increase in the temperature the polar ice caps will dissolve right so when dissolve in this polar ice caps what will happen serve conditions are going to happen one thing is increase in the sea water level now because of increase in the sea water level what will happen the small islands will get submerged within the water okay smaller islands will get submerged within the water and uh, there are other conditions as well because of that right the rim because of increase in temperature people will not be able to survive in certain environments and sometimes the forest and also other living places will become deserts and like that way there are serve kinds of uh, serve kinds of ill effects which are getting caused due to the imbalance of carbon dioxide and oxygen gas okay what will happen if the now now uh, i took only carbon dioxide gas no now what will happen if the amount of oxygen is going to increase in the environment then what will happen 
right from that way also there can be serious problems my dear children now you know that when increase in carbon dioxide level in the environment the global temperature is going to increase from day by day then what will happen if amount of oxygen is going to increase then my dear children what will happen the opposite of the process which is going to happen because of uh, due to increase in the carbon dioxide the opposite process of that that means this is like global cooling right so it's getting cooled down from gradually from this amount of temperature temperature is dropping down gradually and creating an ice age i think you have heard about the ice age ice ages previously so those ice ages were actually created because of the imbalance of carbon dioxide and oxygen gas if more oxygen gas is getting released then my dear children we will, will be heading into an ice age okay so there are there should be a balance between the environment right there should be a balance increasing any component is not good each and every component should be maintained within a good balanced otherwise we will be facing uh, several issues and uh, also because of that issues my dear children what will happen the environment will get destroyed for sure okay right so the other thing is that then it has an ability to restore its condition so but today this equilibrium equilibrium is affected due to complicated human activities now the other thing now i took when i'm discussing about the carbon dioxide gas i took some some examples like emission of uh, carbon dioxide gas by the burning of fossil fuel you know that these things are going to do by human beings right human beings are the ones who are comb combusting these fossil fuel right so because of the human activities mainly because of the human activities okay what has happened today is these conditions these equilibrium levels are going to right this uh, i mean like you know like uh, the balance between these levels are going to right fade away i mean like because of the human activities the balance is getting broken right now okay it's keep getting broken from time to time so in the near future we won't be able to survive within this atmosphere or without within this uh, biosphere my dear children without within planet earth mainly because of the human activities the planet will be uh, will becoming inhabitable right when we are going moving on to the future mainly because of the activities of human beings okay so because of these complicated activities my dear children our biosphere is at a threat right now right okay then for then you are given with another sub topic here we are going to discuss about the organizational levels in our biosphere that means like what is the way of creating a biosphere an ecosystem okay so organizational levels within the organize now when you take the organizational levels of the human beings let's take the human being and if you are being asked to write down the organizational level of human beings right or any kind of an organism multicellular organism how would you write you would start from cells then tissues then organs then systems then the organism okay this is how the organizational levels of human body can be observed but my dear children when you come into this thing the organizational levels of biosphere right so within here also we'll be discussing about how does the organizational levels of our biosphere our living environment are composed of okay what are the special conditions and what are the special factors we can observe over there like the cells organs and so on in, uh, in our human body okay so we'll we'll see what are the organizational levels then so you are given with the point first biosphere is organized from the simplest level to the complex level this organization can be shown in the following flow chart so you are given with a flow chart my dear children within the flow chart you can observe the 
organizational levels in the biosphere so there are one two three four five organizational levels let's see first of all individual this is the simplest unit in the biosphere individual that means any kind of a person any kind of a living thing one particular living thing right then population then several of those organisms several organisms are going to create a certain amount of population then a community different kinds of populations different kind of species different kinds of populations together create a community then ecosystems ecosystems i think you have learned about the ecosystems in grade 9 i think you could remember those things so ecosystem is a place where all the populations and all the living and non-living things interacting each other okay then the biosphere so biosphere is made up with large number of collections of right large the almost all the right uh, all the environments environmental conditions and all the ecosystems in our atmosphere or in our planet earth is the biosphere right all the components all the ecosystems in our bios uh, in our planet earth is the biosphere so this is how the biosphere is made up with right now we'll discuss one by one each uh, then you are given uh, before that you are given with another figure to understand the biosphere my dear children okay so observe the organizational levels of the biosphere in the diagram given below so like i said all starts with the individual then a population certain amount of number of organisms then a community different kinds of organisms interacting in each interacted uh, interacting each other in a certain environment community so as you can see there are different kinds of organisms there is only one in here only one particular species is observed only here individual just a one organism right one particular organism belong to a one certain species population population means the number of organisms living in a certain environment which belong to the which belong to the same species then my dear children the community so community means you can observe different species over here right so as you can see within the figure there are several organisms which are given so community then the ecosystem all the communities and living non living things in charge in uh, interacted each other is the ecosystem then my dear children the entire ecosystems contained within the planet earth is the biosphere okay so this is how the biosphere is made up with right then so now we are going to discuss each and every part okay each and every uh component in our biosphere right starting from individual to the biosphere let's see then so the first and foremost organizational uh, organizational level is given right so this is the individual so let's see a single organism belongs to a particular species and lives in the environment is referred to as an individual example given coconut plant elephant so a single organism belong to a particular species and lives in the environment is referred to as an individual so individual means just a one organism in simple it can be any organism an elephant a coconut plant a grass right then uh, people people you can't say as people a man like that way okay one type of individual which belong to one certain species that's it next one given a species is a group of similar organisms who can interbreed naturally to produce fertile offspring a species is a group of similar organisms who can interbreed naturally to produce fertile offspring so i think uh, when i'm discussing about the individual i told you that they belong to the one particular species i told you that thing right so species mean some kind of an organism which belong to the same category right so there can be male and female so these can reproduce naturally to create new offspring that kind of a category of organism is referred as and as a as a species okay this is called as a species so species means my dear children okay species means here we can observe 
one kind of a particular organism one type of a particular organism right that can reproduce with their mates to produce new offsprings a species so you are given with an assignment then Name different species found in, in a particular location of your home garden or school premises. So very simple my dear children. Okay, so you have to write down types of species which you can observe in a certain location. It can be school premises or in your home garden like in your living environment. So this is very simple my dear children. So if you take the environment that we are living in, we can take human beings then my dear children coconut plants then grass okay then my dear children cats dogs okay so like that way there are several organisms several species um even then that you can observe different kinds of magpies then uh, different kinds of crows okay then uh, there can be even false as well okay hens okay so like that way we can observe different kinds of organisms in our living environment so all of these living all of these organisms they belong to uh, different they belong to different different species so dog is a different species cat a different species human different species coconut plant once again the same so like that way these are the ones who are referred as species they have the ability to reproduce new offsprings right by the reproduction process so it's very simple my dear children actually right i even uh, even the even not for you guys not uh, but even for like you know like uh, very smaller students even can write down these examples without any trouble right then so i'm not going to write down any of these things so i have mentioned you what kind of a thing is this in species is so i hope that you have the idea about the species then right so let's head on to see the next one then so next one given population right population a group of organisms belong to the same species in a particular geographical location during a specific time period is called a population right so what is the population my dear children population is the group of organisms belong to the same species in a particular geographical location during a specific time period so this is called as a population 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 means my dear children number of organisms that belong to the same species who are living on a certain location population okay remember the organisms should belong to the same species when we are discussing about the population and it sh or it also should be in a certain geographical location we won't we, we can't i mean like we can't change the living location okay living environment for an example here given see the number of elephants lived in yala national park in year 2011 is 5879 5879 so yala national park that's the geographical location it's elephants the type of species then the population is 5879 and the specific time period the year 2011 so these are the right conditions or so these are the special uh, points that we need to aware of when writing down a population the species name right the species okay then we have write down the population count then we have to mention the uh, geographical region then after that we have to mention the specific time period okay so the number of organisms which belong to the same species living on a certain environment in a given year or in a given specific time period is referred as the population next point human population in sri lanka in the year 2014 is 21 million 899 445 so 
Another example given the human population in Sri Lanka are now human, right? Human, the species. Then geographical location, Sri Lanka. Then the year 2014. Then the population or the count, 21,899,445, right? 21,899,445. This is the human population in Sri Lanka according to the year 2014, right? So I hope you got the idea. Remember, there are certain cases that we need to follow. There are certain points that we need to aware of. The population, the count, the geographical region, okay. Then my dear children, the year, right? The year and the particular species. Remember these four, four points when we are mentioning the population of a certain uh, type of organisms or certain type of a species, right? Next one. A group of different populations interact with each other in a particular area is referred to as community. Group of different populations interact with each other in a particular area is referred to as a community. So group of different populations, different population means different species, which are getting interacted with each other in a particular area is referred to as community. So here my dear children, right, there are different kinds of organisms who are living in a different, uh, who are living in a particular environment. And also my dear children, these organisms are interacting each other okay these organisms are interacting each other then example given animal community in yala national park so animal community in yala national park the mangrove plant community in nikambu lagoon area so animal community animal community means there are different kinds of animals birds and, and then uh, you know um, other kinds of wild animals okay then uh, types of lions right then tigers elephants all of these things all of these species right are considered as a community right for example given a simple example the animals living in yala national park okay then another example this belongs to a plant based one so the number of or the amount of mangrove plants which are growing around the lagoon area of Nikambu beach. So like that way we can uh, get different kinds of examples for the community. So remember in a community there are different kinds of species right who are living in a certain environment community. Then the next one ecosystem right ecosystem. All the communities and the non-living component with, uh, with which they interact in a particular area is called an ecosystem. A pond, decaying log, forest, a beach with rocks and cliffs. So all the communities and non-living component with which they interact in a particular area is called an ecosystem so ecosystem means my dear children it is the area okay it is a certain place where all the organisms and also non-living things which are interacting each other okay so another example for that thing is given a pond so when you take a pond it's an aquatic environment over there, there is water and there are these different kinds of aquatic plants and aquatic organisms, other types of aquatic organisms who are interacting with each other. Okay, so it's an, uh, it's a, an ecosystem. Okay, then next one, decaying log. When you take a decaying wood log, there are certain types of bacteria, different kinds of fungi, then uh, small insects. Then sometimes birds will also come to catch these insects, okay. So that particular region can also be considered as an environment, okay, or as an ecosystem. Next one, a beach, right, a forest. So you know there are different interactions which is going to happen within the forest, then also within the beach as well, right. Okay, so you are given with an 
where you are given with a figure now within figure my dear children you can see the interactions that can be observed within a pond ecosystem right so there are different kinds of components and within these different kinds of components you can observe that different kinds of organisms interact in each other so there are different kinds of animals right okay and there are different kinds of physical things like water and sun okay and uh, all of these things are getting interacted each other right so this is the one which is referred as an ecosystem so you are given with a point here figure shows the interactions of the living organisms with the non-living components uh, component in an uh, in the pond ecosystem so non-living uh, living organisms with non-living component in the pond ecosystem you can observe those things within the figure given here okay it's very simple my dear children what they do is they interact with each other within an ecosystem organisms or living thing or non-living things right they interact each other with each and every component within the uh, ecosystem okay so the components can be living or non-living any so this is called as an ecosystem then my dear children the final one biosphere the collection of all these ecosystems on earth is known as the biosphere it is the region in which the organisms are spread in on the earth the biosphere is composed of three components so biosphere my dear children that's the area or the environment that we can observe which consisting all the ecosystems okay the one single one particular environment that we can observe with all the ecosystems in simple that's our planet earth okay that is the planet earth biosphere means that is the planet earth so our biosphere can be divided into three main categories so first one given lithosphere the crust and the upper mantle of the earth that means my, my dear children the ground right you know that there are different kinds of environments in the, in our ground level okay the soil the earth crust so this is the lithosphere next one hydrosphere the region that includes all oceans and fresh water bodies 70 percent of the earth's surface is covered with water and uh, now the second one this is the this is the largest uh, environment largest uh, component in the biosphere my dear children this is the hydrosphere so within hydrosphere right you can observe the aquatic environments okay oceans and other all the freshwater bodies are considered under the hydrosphere so 70 percent of the earth crust okay 70 percent of the not, uh, the not the earth crust 70 percent of the whole earth my dear children 70 percent of the whole earth right belongs to the hydrosphere okay so that means my dear children 70 percent of the earth is covered with water right next one the final one atmosphere the region that contains air around the around the earth so when you take the atmosphere atmosphere is the air which covers the planet earth okay so this is the atmosphere so all of these three components can be considered as the right all of these three components can be considered as the uh, components in the biosphere or main categories in the biosphere right okay then so you are given with another point the number of organisms of a species living in a unit area of a selected habitat is called the population density number of organisms of a species living in a unit area of a selected habitat is called the population density now can you remember the population population means in a certain geographical location in a specific time period in a given species the total number of organisms okay for a one particular species only my dear children now nah? population then the population density means when you calculate this population to unit area ah now that value is considered as the population density now in simple the previous example can you remember in 2014 
there was around 22 million people living in Sri Lanka. Now, when you take that value and divide it by the uh, divided by the area of Sri Lanka, ah, you can find out the population density. Very simple. Population density gives an idea for how, how much of people are living or how much of organisms are living that belongs to the particular species, that, that belongs to a certain particular species in unit area of surface, right? In unit area of a certain surface. Okay, by dividing population by the unit, uh, by the area, the, by the entire area of a certain geographical location, we can find out how many organisms are living in a certain environment, right, within a unit area. Okay, so let's see the next point then. Yes, the same example is taken my dear children. Let's see the human population density of Sri Lanka in year 2014 is 329.12 per square meter right per square meter so 329.12 per square meter the size of natural population varies with the time there are four factors that affects the population density right before that we'll once again see this example what do you mean by this the population density of sri lanka in 2014 is 329.12 per square meter that means here the total population right there was a value of about 21 uh, 22 million so that value was divided by the area of sri lanka okay so the area which used over here is from square meters so the area of sri lanka right you take the area of sri lanka in square meters you take the population, the human population using a number, using a value. Then you divide that value by the area of Sri Lanka. By that way, you can find out the population density. So when you divide it, you, uh, they have received this answer 329.12. So what does this mean? When you take one square meter, Right? When you take one square meter, my dear children, that means when you take a small bit of a, let's take a tile, right? When you take a tile with, uh, which has a one meter length and one meter breadth, you know that over there the area is one square meter. So within that one square meter of an area, 300, about 329 people are living. That's what do you mean by the population density. In a certain area, right, in a certain area, the amount of organisms which are living on, but however, within a unit area, okay, within a unit area that belong to the same species, right. So this is what do you mean by the population density when you take one square meter of a distance right one square meter of an area not the distance right one meter distance then one meter distance length and breadth okay where you take a box or you imagine a uh, tile area you, you imagine a tile that has one meter length and a one meter breadth so within that tile 329 people are living in Sri Lanka this is as an average okay as an average this is the average number okay this is what do you mean by the population density so when you take one square meter of an area average in sri lanka the population is 329 this is the idea of population density right so you are given with another point see the size of a natural population varies with the time it's uh, obvious no you know that natural environment we occurred into natural environmental conditions and also uh, because of several reasons from year to year the count okay count the count of this uh, particular uh, species right is getting changed so there are four factors that affect affects the population density like that way there are four factors that is going to affect the population density. So you are given with those factors. Number one, birds. 
number of newborn organisms added to the population. So it's very simple my dear children, the number of births. So when increase in number of births, you know that the population is also going to increase and the population density also is also going to increase, right? So births, these are the number of organisms or number of uh, number of organisms or number of uh, number of individuals added to the group or to the species right within a certain year or within a certain time period who are living in a particular area then the next one deaths the opposite of births right the number of organisms die in the population when you take a certain area uh, the number of organisms that belong to the species who is going to die who is going to lose their lives within a certain time period deaths next one immigration the number of organisms add to the population outside are uh, immigrations there can be certain number of organisms okay there can be a certain amount of people or here individuals which are coming from abroad from a different uh, location from a different geographical location to uh, the particular lo location that we are going to discuss about for a simple example the number of people or number of visitors who came to Sri Lanka from foreign countries or else uh, the, actually we won't be able to take them as visitors we have to take them as immigrants so number of immigrants came to Sri Lanka right within the year 2014 that count is also going to change the population of Sri Lanka next one immigrations right immigrations so immigrations the number of organisms leave the population so immigrations exiting right so the number of organisms who are going to exit emigrate right immigrate so number of organisms which are going to immigrate from a certain environment right to the outside is referred as the right immigrations so these immigrations are also going to change the population and the population density in a particular geographical region okay so these four factors are the factors that is going to change the population right in a certain area and also with the help of that the population density is also getting changed right then the number of organisms of a species living in a unit area of a selected habitat is called the population density right we discussed that thing about the population density the human population density of Sri Lanka year 2014 is 329.12. So I think you have referred these things in the previous chapter. So you to get a more idea, right, there is another figure given in here. Outside this thing, you are given with another figure over here. Let's see the, what this figure called. So there is a certain environment over here. Number of organisms in the population number of born organisms then my dear children number of organisms added from the outside the birds which are going to come to this certain environment from outside then number of organisms die in the population now the selected uh, environment within the selected environment number of organisms who are going to die then number of organisms leave the population number of organisms which is going to leave from uh, leave the population I mean like number of birds over here which are going to leave the community right migrate uh, migrating so like that way the four factors are given that affects the population and the population density okay birds deaths immigrations immigrations right okay right the number of organisms in a natural population changes with time according to a particular pattern when this pattern is expressed in a graph it will be a sigmoid shape growth curve there are four main phases in it so now what we are going to do is we are going to graph down right we are going to graph the population growth okay year to year we are going to mention the population in a graph okay so let's take a certain species let's imagine that we are going to take a certain species and we are going to graph it like this so when you graph it like this my dear children 
they are saying that right the shape of the graph is sigmoid and it is a curve like this okay and for each and every population this is going to be a pattern right for a population it is going to be a pattern and the pattern is this the shape see like s kind of a shape okay so this is a sigmoid shape growth curve this is called as the growth curve and there are four main phases in it so we can observe four main phases within this okay so as you can see now the four phases are included within the growth curve this is called as the typical population growth curve right for any kind of a population the typical growth curve is represented in here this is how the growth curve is uh, for a uh, for any kind of a population can be determined okay right then so there are four different phases let's observe what are these phases one by one right phase one slow growth phase or else referred as the lag phase so this is the first phase my dear children the slow growth phase or else the lag phase so you can observe the number of organisms over here so this is the area then this part only starting from a certain point the increase is very very slow actually there is none, none no increase at all right when you observe in like uh, observing this thing the growth rate is very very slow right okay so let's see so as i said the growth rate is slow as the organisms are not well adapted to the environment and the number of mature organisms that can reproduce are less therefore the number of organisms increases slowly in this phase so this is the first and foremost phase this is called as the lag phase or else my dear children the slow growth phase so in slow growth phase the growth is very slow why is that because my dear children now let's imagine human beings so human beings we came from the eight snow so let's take that prehistoric era first over that time my dear children the environment was very harsh still the apes and the, or the people are adapting to the environment number of deaths are going to be very high some because of several reason, reasons you know like the predation different kinds of other, other organisms may feed on these organisms so uh, then the diseases because of the less advanced less technology less means actually there was technology was not there, there was no, uh, no technology actually during those th th that time period if a certain organism is going to uh, have a certain kind of a disease or else have a certain kind of an accident then that organism is going is, is going, is going is go, uh, then then that, then that organism is going to be left down right for sure that the the organism the particular organism is going to be left down and the other ones are going to move on it's because that the technology is very less in that time period my dear children okay there are no any medications to do the medications the people are not being smart enough so therefore over that time when that when you consider that time period the population growth is going to be very simple and very slow actually the population is not growing at all and the other case is that because of those conditions the mature organisms who can reproduce are also less mature organisms who can reproduce are also less okay we are uh, there are very less number of organisms who can reproduce because of those things like you know lack of technology lack of medicine right then lack more lack of brain power right thinking capacity because of that several reasons okay 
the organisms, the number of organisms are going to be very less. The growth of the number of, number of organisms is going to be very less in this environment, right? So the other case is that, my dear children, because of reduction in the number, the number of organisms who can reproduce is also going to reduce, right? Okay. Then, my dear children, the second phase, phase two, high growth phase, exponential phase, high growth phase. As the organisms are well adapted to the environment, the number of organisms that reproduce is high. Presence of favorable environmental conditions and abundance of food increases the growth rate of the organisms rapidly. Now the ne next phase, my dear children, the second phase, phase two. So within this phase two, my dear children, you can observe there is a very high upward motion of the curve. See, there's a very high upward motion like this. The upward motion is very high over here. See how, how it has gone upward right now. There's a very high upward movement. So this upward movement can be observed in the second phase, which is the high growth phase or the exponential phase. What is the reason for this high growth phase then? Or for the exponential phase? Here, my dear children, when time is going to pass by, let's take those apes, huh? the previous example which I have took. So the, those apes or, the, our, or our ancestors, now they have well adapted to the environment. When the time is going to pass by their thinking capacity, their brain capacity is also going to increase, right? Then my dear children, they have developed certain amount of weapons to protect themselves so that they can protect from the predators. And their body and all the other body structures have well adapted to the environment. And now the harsh environmental conditions are becoming favorable environment conditions, right? And my dear children, the food because of making those equipments and tools and other things their technology has been now somewhat developed rather than the previous case and there are mature organisms and my dear children they can hunt for food without any trouble okay they can protect themselves from the predators they have abundance of food they have very good amount of food and also their body and all the other structures have been well adapted to the environment and now there are several in, uh, factors which are favorable for their growth. So their amount of organisms that can reproduce is also going to increase. When increasing the number of organisms or number of apes which, we, which can reproduce within a certain time period, what will happen? The growth will be massive. There are, there are well, if we, uh, there are well, favorable conditions, environmental conditions. There are favorable, uh, there are favorable uh, external factors. And my dear children, technology has been developed like somewhat. The hunt for food, right, is also, the competition for food is also being reduced right now. So all the factors now in favor for the growth of the population. So because of that, right, what will happen? The growth is going to be massive in, sec in this second phase. First of all, the organisms are getting adapted to the environment. Then when they are adapted very well, then what will happen? This reproduction is going to be increased as there are a large number of organisms who can reproduce, mature organisms who can reproduce. And from that, my dear children, definitely we can observe the growth, right? Growth is also going to be massive. There's a massive growth, right then. The third, decelerating phase. So after the increase, so it was like this, no? After the increase, now my dear children, they have increased up to a certain level. Then they have started to, you know, like drop down or decrease the third phase. So decelerating phase, due to competition for resources, food shortage, spreading of diseases, predation and parasitism, the growth, of, growth rate of the population decreases. 
uh, now up to a certain level up to a maximum potential they are growing then what will happen then my dear children with the increase of population food is becoming short okay earlier less number of people so they can get more amount of food without any trouble okay so in that case my dear children what will happen the organisms will grow and grow and also they will reproduce then the number of organisms will get increased then what will happen first and foremost thing is the food is becoming short food will not be enough then what will happen because of consuming different kinds of food okay which are toxic and which are getting uh, you know like uh, which are not uh, good for the people or which are not good for the organisms what will happen different kinds of diseases will arise right different kinds of diseases will arise then in that case uh, you know some number of organisms are going to die then my dear children the predation because of increase in the population the predation is also going to increase and also my dear children what will happen the parasitism because of the microorganisms right more amount of people are going to die so therefore after a certain level after a certain level of the growth the amount of population or the uh, population growth is going to gradually decelerate so this uh, rate this grow, this phase is referred as the decelerating phase then this is the third phase starting slowly then rapid growth then gradually decelerating okay right then the fourth and the final one stationary phase or the stabilized phase the number of organisms in a population increases till it has a population adapted to the environmental conditions which the environment can bear ah now in the earlier time my dear children when you take the exponential phase or the second phase number of organisms are keep getting increasing 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 then my dear children in the environment can't bear this amount of organisms right the environment will not be able to bear because of that food shortage parasitism predation and like that is different different kinds of cases are coming so by that way certain amount of num certain amount of uh, people organisms are going to reduce okay and over there they are going to stabilize that means my dear children over there the number of deaths and the number of new births are going to come in a balance in that case the growth is going to be zero it's because that food which is available is only for certain amount of people only okay so the environment can maintain that number of people the excess is going to die this is a simple example now this is just a simple example okay so my dear children in the fourth and the final phase final phase the get it get decelerates gradually and getting stopped on a certain point so that point is referred as the stationary phase or the stabilized phase and my dear children when it is getting stabilized you know like the growth growth rate is going to be like zero this amount of population this number of organisms is called as the carrying capacity the carrying capacity that's the capacity which can reach to the future the carrying capacity so here given the number of organisms in the population increases increases till it till it has a population adapted to environmental conditions which the environment can bear once it reaches its carrying capacity the population achieves the dynamic equilibrium during dynamic dynamic equilibrium birth and the mortality rates are equal hence the growth rate of the population is zero when it comes to this balanced situation the number of organisms in the population is called as the carrying capacity right 
so like i said my dear children here because of the decelerating phase right gradually the population is reduced however my dear children there is a redu the reduction is going to stop on a certain place okay then at that place what will happen it will become equilibrium births and the mortality rates are going to be equal and therefore the growth of the population is going to be zero so like i said in the previous example when it is coming to a certain level when it can come to a certain level at that level right the growth rate is going to be zero because new organisms are not getting entered to the population okay right because of the grow uh, because of the mortality rates and the birth rates are going to be equal that means when one person is going to die one is going to uh, one new organism is going to come to the world right one organism is going to bo born to the world okay so therefore what will happen there is no growth within the population B growth is becoming zero so this amount of organisms or this amount of population in the fourth fourth phase which the population growth is going to be zero this number of population or this amount of organisms is the one which is referred as the carrying capacity so here once again given when it comes to this balance situation the number of organisms in the population is called as the carrying capacity this is called as the carrying capacity then right so these are the four phases that we can observe within the right these are the four phases that we can observe within the typical growth curve for each and every population my dear children this is for each and every for any of the population any of a species we can observe the same pattern if you go with uh, if you go and draw it to the future okay so there are four phases first one the lag phase then the exponential phase decelerating phase then the stabilized phase okay there are four phases right then right my dear children so we have studied about the main components that we can identify within the biosphere and we discussed that biosphere is made up from one particular individual to the massive planet earth that we are living on right now so there are different different uh, categories there are different different uh, structural levels within the biosphere starting from the individual to a population community ecosystem and biosphere right so like that way there are different kinds of structural levels and we discuss each of these extra structural levels and there are special points regarding the structural levels then after that my dear children we discussed about the population we discussed about the population density then we discussed about the uh, growth curve my dear children finally we identified for each and every population the growth curve is going to be is the same one right for each and every population when you take right the growth curve is going to be your same pattern okay and we identified there are four phases within this pattern my dear children which are named as lag phase exponential phase decelerating and the stabilized phase okay so over there we discuss each and uh, for um, the special factors related to the each and every category right for the each and every phase we discuss what are the things that can be observed for the each and every place so like that we have we have discussed several things regarding the lesson part right now okay so within this part i'm going to, uh, uh, so my dear children now i'm going to finish up the first chapter by this part okay so within this part we have studied several things regarding the biosphere lesson so in the next chapter we'll be starting about the population growth curve for human population okay and we'll be discussing what is the shape of that one and why, why like what are the special features that can be identified with the human population 
So we'll be discussing about the human population growth curve in our next chapter. So I'll be hoping uh, I'll be hoping to meet you with our second chapter to discuss the further things related to the lesson. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.